All right, we are experts on enols, so let's talk about a reaction called an alpha halogenation. Alpha is referring to the alpha carbon of a carbonyl, so you know what we're doing. So here's a typical ketone again. What we're going to do is treat this with a halogen source like Br2, is pretty common. And we're going to run this reaction in an acid, and this could be um, acetic acid. That's the structure of acetic acid. Sometimes people just write ACOH as acetic acid. But regardless, we're going to run this in an acid. And we're going to get alpha halogenation. I'm not going to go through the absolute full mechanism, but we've just recently talked about the fact that a, a ketone in acid rapidly establishes an equilibrium between the keto form and the enol form. So if we run this reaction and we react uh, bromine and acid in this ketone, then we're going to generate pretty quickly a, a reasonable concentration of our enol. Now it's going to be low concentration, but it, it's going to be a, a concentration that's replenished by this uh, rapid equilibrium. So what does this enol do? This enol as an alkene can react with this, uh, this uh, source of bromine, this Br2. Now, we talked about the fact that this enol is a pretty electron-rich alkene. Why is it so electron-rich? Well, because its oxygen and its lone pairs are pumping electron density into that ring. So we're actually going to use the oxygen lone pairs when we write this mechanism. So this oxygen pushes its electrons to force this alkene to attack this Br molecule of Br2. And what we get is that what was the alpha carbon, we put a halogen, in this case bromine, on our uh, alpha carbon. Now, what does this deprotonation? Well, we're going to have some kind of base. Um, when you're in acid, it's hard to talk about having strong bases. But fortunately, to deprotonate this carbonyl, we don't need a strong base. Even a weak base will pluck this off. So we'll just kind of be vague about that and say something in there will take care of that proton for us. And what we've done is we've made an alpha bromo ketone. Now, I, I pick on this, this uh, ketone in the upper left in almost all these videos. I use acetone. Why do, you, why do I use acetone? It's not because this chemistry only works on acetone. It's because it, it's easy and quick to draw. But, you know, we, we could do this same reaction on any number of ketones. So we could do something like this, treat this with Br2 and ACOH. That's, that's capital A, uh, lowercase c, OH. Treat that with a, uh, bromine and acetic acid, and we'll get the brominated ketone. We could do this on something like cyclohexanone. And we get the alpha bromo ketone. So just because I always use acetone as a starting material for everything, keep in your mind this reaction applies to almost any ketone. The one thing we have to be careful of is that if, if we want the reaction to work and only give one product, we need to make sure there's only one enolizable carbon. So, you know, acetone is easy because it's symmetrical. And because it's symmetrical, we can pick out to have the reaction at either uh, on either carbon. For this lower case, this is uh, acetophenone, there's only one carbon that has alpha hydrogens. And again, we go to cyclohexanone, it's symmetrical. So there are limitations, but this works on almost any ketone.